Good morning and happy Easter. Our presider this morning is Father Ethan. Um, let us please stand and join in singing Jesus Christ is Risen Today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. All right, so good to be with you all. Wow, there's so many people here. So great to see you. There's such love. It's the joy of the resurrection. Uh, there may be some of us who are looking for seats. We do have an overflow uh, space in the hall, and there's video, and there's seats and so we'll bring communion to you as well. So if you're more comfortable going to the hall, you're welcome to. But we are united in God's love wherever we are. Jesus went into the grave and he's united with us in our own suffering. And he brings us to the glory of the resurrection. And we continue to be united with him. And so as we prepare for this day, we also humbly acknowledge that sometimes we do stumble. Sometimes we do fall. Maybe we have thoughts or words or deeds that we ask forgiveness for. And so as we prepare for this glory of the resurrection, let us ask God once again for his forgiveness and mercy as we say, I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, that you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Holy God. I'm sorry. Didn't see the page. Somebody flipped it. Ah, okay. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what had happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he's the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everything who believe, everybody who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. to the be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John.
On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning, while it was still dark, and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. so good to be with you all today. So good to see you. I see so many of you in your Easter dresses and your suits and Easter hats. I even see some, some bunny ears. Uh, so it certainly is a, a glorious day uh, of the resurrection where we thank God uh, for the amazing gift that he's giving us in Jesus. So these past days, these past this past season of Lent, we've been journeying with Christ through the desert. Uh, maybe some of us have, have given something up uh, for Lent. Somebody gave me a big box of chocolate already this morning, uh, so I don't know if I'm going to eat it all today or give it away. Uh, so, but we, we rejoice, right? We rejoice because there is this, this freshness and this newness and the suffering that we've endured in different ways. Uh, the promise of the resurrection is that there's this this new hope and a new promise fulfilled in him. And in a special way during Holy Week, this has been a week that we've journeyed in a very uh, close and intense way with Jesus as he's made his way to Jerusalem, as he's made his way to the cross, as he's been betrayed. He was betrayed with a kiss by one of his closest friends, one of his disciples, one that had journeyed with him for years. And then in this crucial, intimate moment, he sold him out for money. His other disciples, they ran away. They even said, I do not know the man. I'm not one of his followers. I don't even know him. And ultimately, Jesus went to the cross, he suffered, he died, and he was buried. And so the the last few days we've been reflecting on this, beginning with the Paschal Triduum, which that began Holy Thursday. So Thursday evening, Jesus gathered those closest to him around the altar, around this table, and he offered himself. He gave them bread and wine but it was really his own body and blood, his soul and divinity. He was offering himself to those closest to him. He was strengthening them for the journey. And so we recall that, we remember that in the Mass of the Lord's Supper Thursday evening. Jesus is strengthening us. He's feeding us. He's nourishing us for the difficult moments that we're going to experience. He wants us to know that he is with us. And ultimately on that day, Good Friday, Jesus gave his life. But today we're here in the resurrection, in the glory. The glory of God raised Jesus from the dead in a new life and a new way. And so uh, at the end of this Mass, you're going to have, there's a little gift we have for you. It's 
some bookmarks. It's a little prayer card. And it commemorates this Paschal Triduum. It commemorates this journey that we've been on. So on one side, it says, blessed, broken, and given. Blessed, broken, and given. And this helps to remind us of the offering that Jesus himself made. That he was blessed. That he was broken on the cross. And that he is given. And then on the flip side of that card, you're going to see another image And it says, filled, shared, go! And so it's kind of like, on your marks, get set, go. It's like the the racers, right? You're in a sprint. You have to have that that encouragement to go. Well, that's what happens. Uh, St. Peter, in the the letter to the Romans, he speaks of how if, if we die with him, we live with him. If we die with him, we live with him. And then he says... You know, that we're on this, we're competing. So we're in this competition, we're in this movement, this race. We're living the life. But we can only do that filled, shared, go. We can only do that if we actually receive him. So that's why there's two sides of the bookmark. It's one bookmark. It's one Paschal Triduum. It's one offering of God. You cannot have Easter Sunday. You cannot have the glory of the resurrection unless you have Good Friday. Jesus had to suffer and to die so that he could bring forth the new life. So sometimes we just want to go to the glory. We just want to be in the resurrection and we forget that no, there is actually the dying with Christ. We have to stay united in that. So last night we had a beautiful, beautiful celebration at the Easter Vigil. And so we brought, there were new people who came into our church through baptism, uh, there was others who made a profession of faith, so they, they had been previously baptized, but they chose to become Catholic. They received the Eucharist for the first time. So I'd like to invite one of them up now. She doesn't know I'm calling her, but Carrie, I'd like you to come up. I was just going to share her story, but as I was... Come on up, Carrie. As I was coming in and getting ready, I, I saw Carrie come in. She was here. We didn't leave till probably after midnight, huh? Did you get any sleep? A little bit? <laughs> Sorry, Carrie. This is her first day as a Catholic. Let's give her a round of applause. So she and her husband, Sheikh, uh, they've been on a beautiful journey. And so um, two years ago, on Easter Eve... Easter Vigil, they had a a special encounter. So what happened two years ago, uh, Carrie? So we we both went to sleep, and um, my husband kind of saw a mist in the the room. I didn't see that. Um, And then we both had uh, visions of Jesus in our dreams, and he had been going through uh, some really serious serious health problems. And... um, when the vision I saw was just Jesus um, placing his hands over him saying, I'm healing you. And then he saw Jesus just reaching his hand out. And we both woke up and had no idea that each other had these dreams. And um, then we shared with each other. And here we are today. Although he's not here with me. <laughs> but he'll get to see this later. <laughs> so so you both woke up. And how, how did that work? Was it kind of like... Um, Honey, I got something to tell you. Uh, Jesus came to me in a vision. (laughs) How did... Yeah. um, You just look at each other? You're like, how does that... How did you share that? Yeah, so it was kind of like, hey, I have to tell you something. He's like, hey, I have to tell you something. (laughs) Um, And then we shared. And, um, you know, we had been kind of going through uh, a spiritual journey for several years. And he grew up Hindu. And I um, was involved in New Age practices, and um, so we were always seeking, and um, God was really seeking us that night, so and we're super grateful. Wow. Well, let's give you a round of applause. Thank you, Carrie. So they were seeking, and as Carrie just shared, but 
but Jesus was seeking us. So they were seeking, they were seeking God, they were seeking, you know, the spirituality they were seeking, but, but God was seeking. And so in his mercy and his time and his way on Easter vigil, the night of the resurrection, they both had these visions. And so they were drawn, they were drawn to him. And that, that journey drew them to, to our church. And so I've had this, this beautiful opportunity to get to know them uh, during this journey, this encounter. And so as they were having, so they're having these visions, and Sheikh had shared uh, something. He says, you know, I, I saw Jesus. Jesus came to me. And so he was, you know, talking to some people, and he says there's just this fire that's, that's burning in his heart, and he just wants to know more and more and more of who Christ is. So he just, he's longing to, he and, and, and Carrie, they're, they're longing to know who Christ is and to have that relationship. And so they're, you know, going to Bible studies and they're reading and, and asking questions. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people are just saying like, what's, what's with you? Isn't it enough? Like, come on, man. Like, we're doing, come on, you're going to church. Like, what, what more do you want? As Sheikh just said, you don't understand. Jesus appeared to me in a vision. I, I think about that every day. I can't get his vision, I can't get him out of my mind. I think of him all the time. I want to know who he is. I want to grow with him. That his whole, shake and carry their whole, their whole lives have become for Christ. And so it started as two years ago as, as a vision. Last night, they received Jesus in the Eucharist for the first time. It was not just a vision. They received Jesus in the flesh. Jesus is sharing his own body and blood, his soul and divinity. He's sharing his very self, and they were able to receive him. And as we were, we've been reflecting on these, these last days, when we receive the Eucharist, when we receive other food, that food becomes part of us. When we receive, we had breakfast this morning, your pancakes, your eggs, that became part of you. That's giving you the energy and the nourishment to be able to continue on in the day. When we receive the Eucharist, it's not us consuming the Eucharist. The Eucharist is consuming us. We are becoming Christ. We are being digested we're being consumed we are becoming part of the living christ it is no longer i who live it is christ who lives within me that's what saint paul says and that's what's happening in this liturgy that's what's happening in this life that's why we are called christians we are christ it's not just enough that jesus came and he wanted to take bread and wine and to make it his own body and blood that's not the point the point of the bread and the wine is for us because Jesus wants us to become the body and the blood of Christ. We are Christ. We are the body of Christ. And so that is when we are filled, we are shared, and we go. So we go out. So today, let us drink deeply. Let us feast. Let us be nourished. Let us be strengthened by Christ himself who is blessed, broken, and given for us. Let us be filled. Let us share in this love and go. Go back to our families. Go back to our places of work. Go back to the rest of this world and give them the good news that God loves us, that God is with us, and that Jesus is indeed risen from the dead. Alleluia. My dear sisters and brothers, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And now that our Lenten observance has concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works 
I promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church, and so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. By his resurrection, Christ has conquered all that stands between us and God. We therefore approach the Father now with great confidence. That all church leaders will be renewed in their mission of leading all people to Jesus, the risen Lord. We pray. Lord. For a deeper unity 
among all Christians as they acknowledge together and proclaim to the world the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray. For our neophytes, those newly joined to Christ through baptism, those called to him through the sacraments of imitation, may their witness of new life in God bring fresh enthusiasm and joy to every Christian. We pray. Lord, hear our that as Christ saved us when we were helpless, we too may save the helpless among us, including the poor, the unwelcome, and the unborn. We pray. For the sick and homebound, especially Ella del Rosario, Julie Wall Kimmel, and Larni Anto, and for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. For those gone before us in death, whose lifelong vigil for the Lord has ended, especially Max Berman. We pray. For the intentions of this Mass, for the people of our parish. For our own needs and intention, we now recall in the silence of our hearts. We pray. O God of salvation, in the beauty of this Easter day, set our minds on the new life to which you have called us. Hear and answer our deepest prayer offered in the blessed name of Christ Jesus, our hope and our peace, who is truly risen and lives with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare our table, let us join in singing, Now the Green Blade Rises.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with dear Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John Eudes and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus' prayer is that we truly do become his brothers and sisters, that we are one in Christ. And it's with that confidence that we can call his Father, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb, the love of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let's join in singing our communion hymn, Worthy is the Lamb.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I uh, just want to wish you all a happy Easter on behalf of Father Dave, our associate, our pastoral staff, and all of us here at St. John Eudes. Happy Easter. We thank in a special way everyone who's helped uh, through the liturgies. I'm not going to go into all the details. I'm going to forget somebody, but everybody who's spent time and just helped to prepare for these festivities, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. <laughs> Remember to take home uh, one of the bookmarks. Uh, Jesus has been blessed, broken, and given. And we are filled, shared, and now we go. We go forth with the good news. We go forth with the love of God. And we ask our Blessed Mother Mary uh, to be with us today. Um, and actually, before that, we do have one announcement. We do have an Easter egg hunt that's over at Montal Hall. So right after Mass, for all of our young ones, you can go over, and there's lots of Easter baskets. I saw the Easter bunny. The Easter bunny's here today. So it's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure... Uh, that you, you head on over there. But we ask our Blessed Mother Mary, uh, who continues to journey with us through all of those moments, the difficult moments to the glory of the resurrection, to continue to inspire us and fill us with the promise of God's love. Hail Mary. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs>